Welcome to this episode of The Gunman. In this video, I'll be taking you through how to spray paint a brand new fridge and leave it with a satin gloss finish. Now, uh, I'll start off by taking you guys through uh, the identification of substrates. Uh, a substrate is the material that you're working with and uh, what we've got here is um, two different substrates. So we have the stainless steel part, which is the uh, metal piece that you can see me sanding down there. And we've also got the trimming areas, which is the gray area that you saw there. And that's actually plastic. So um, this is one of the first things they teach you at trade school uh, is identification of substrates. So we need to know what material we're working with uh, so we can figure out what uh, products we're going to use to make our paint stick to that. So uh, the uh, stainless steel needed a good sand down to uh, try to uh, get our primer to etch into it. And we're then wiping the entire job down with uh, wax and grease remover, which is what you see me using here. Uh, that's going to remove any bits of uh, oil, grease, wax, uh, anything like that that may have been left behind from when we were sanding it and uh, from when it's been moved around. And obviously you can see my masking for the for the most of it was done before I sanded it. That was because there's windows on there and I didn't want to hit the windows with my uh, sanding uh, sandpaper. So next up here, uh, those grey parts, I'm actually masking them off. So what I'm going to do is mask these grey uh, spots off first. And then I'll be spraying on my etch primer, which is a 1K CF, so that's chromate free etch primer, the green primer you'll see me use soon. And then the plastic parts, which are these grey parts I'm masking off, uh, I'll actually put over some plastic primer. So uh, if I was to put the etch primer over the plastic, well then the etch primer uh, is designed to stick to the, uh, the metal, uh, so that would stop the plastic from uh, having adhesion over the plastic parts uh, and vice versa if I was just to go and spray the plastic primer over the uh, metal well then it wouldn't stick so this is why I've had to cover up part of it I just decided that it was uh, easier to mask the plastic part off because there was less masking so if I as you can see there's, there's a greater area of the uh, stainless steel so it wouldn't matter um, uh, had you decided to do the stainless steel first so obviously we will end up getting a touch of the plastic primer overspray on our etch but that's not uh, that's not going to matter because it will because the etch is down first it will still stick so th this is our etch primer I put it into my top coat color gun because I want to get a nice finish with it. I've strained it in the gun. I've followed all the procedures as you would with uh, your top coat colour. So, giving it a good stir up, thinned it down at a 60-40 uh, ratio, so 60% of the etch primer. This is a DuPont brand and uh, it's 1K CF etch. So, yeah, just nice medium wet coat. I'm using the 1.3mm fluid tip on it, uh, so I wanted to get it on nice because I'm not going to be sanding it back. Now you could sand this back, uh, it's just a 1K as I said earlier, so it's not going to take long to flush off. Uh, had you, uh, If you're not happy with the finish that you had on it, it was going on a bit funny or a couple of bits of dust landed in it, well, you could actually just grab one of those uh, soft pads and give it a bit of a denib and then continue on painting over the top of that. So there's loads of different uh, materials on the market that you could use, um, but just uh, ask your paint supplier, tell them the material that you're working with, and they will tell you the correct uh, product to use. And uh, now we're getting our plastic primer ready. I just gave that gun a quick flush through, and I'm using a Protec, Protec brand plastic primer here, and then we're unmasking our uh, plastic areas. So just pulling this masking off to allow us to put our plastic primer over that uh, plastic areas. So uh, 
there's a couple of good little things that you can do to save, uh, to reuse your tape. Um, it's always a good idea to um, reuse materials when you can. And if you hang around for a couple of minutes, I'll show you how to get the, the most usage out of your materials, uh, stuff like your tape and that. Just going around, just be nice and easy so they don't peel it back over the edge. But that, that uh, edge I'm using is quite a good one and it's gonna, gonna stick quite well, so I'm pretty confident with it. The top coat uh, color that I'm using is a pre-mixed color, so uh, I didn't put the matting agent or the matting paste in myself. Um, and I'm really happy with the, the gloss level that we ended up with on this job. Um, Perco, Perco Top Coat is the uh, brand. Uh, is the name of the paint and the brand is uh, DuPont. That's a two to one ratio. I've found sometimes it can be a little bit trickier to make the um, make them yourself with the the satin and the matte finishes. I've found uh, this DuPont range has a, a really uh, good a uh, couple of gloss levels, you've got a matte fi finish and a satin finish and they always come out nice and clean. Uh, sometimes the matting paste that you get, they can get a little bit old and you end up just getting uh, dust coming right through and through the paint itself even though you've filtered it and it just, uh, it's one of those things that you can't really polish. Uh, you can't really polish the matte finishes. Uh, I, I hear that there is a way of doing it now um, but I've never done it myself. So. So here we go, we just get our, our um, tape here and you want to squeeze it up nice and tight and you just walk out into the workshop, find the guy that's rubbing a car down, make sure you hit him. And back on with the job. Uh, so this is our Perco Top Coat DuPont, just uh, opening it up here, pre-mix colour as I said satin black. One litre was more than enough. We were left over with a little bit that I'll be definitely using it on in the future because it comes in handy. So make sure you give it an extremely good stir up. This, uh, this Anything that's got um, matting paste in it, uh, it can it's pr uh, prone to sinking to the bottom so give it a real good stir up. Don't forget this is in uh, double speed and I did actually edit a touch of that out too. So. 2 to 1 is the ratio, and this hardener here is, is actually a little bit old, um, it was on the verge of uh, not wanting to use it, it's been sitting there for about 6 or 8 months, it's gone a touch hard, so usually uh, you would have to go 10% uh, reducer, which is what I started off with, and it ended up still really quite thick because that hardener had started uh, thickening up a little bit. Um, now usually hardeners, as long as they're still clear, they will be okay to use. Uh, as long as they're a liquid, obviously, and they're still clear. If they start going milky, and you get a bit of a milky haze through them, that's when you'd throw it out and you'd want to get a new one. But uh, I knew that this was still going to be okay, so to save a couple of dollars, I decided not to get a new one. And as it turned out, it turned out uh, quite well. And I'm just... Uh, just checking the viscosity or the thickness just on the stick there. If you wanted to be uh, correct, 100% correct, you could uh, use a viscosity cup. And I actually have another video on that one. So you should check that out if you haven't already seen it. I'll put a link here for you. That'll open in a new window and you can uh, continue watching this and watch that one after. So Here we go in the spray booth. And I'm using the uh, Devilvis GTI Pro Light. Uh, Pro, sorry, not the Pro Light. Um, with the uh, T2 air cap on it, so that's a non-HVLP air cap. Uh, I'm doing that because I don't want to. I don't want too much uh, fluid on there. I just want to. Just want to get it covered. So I've got nice two coats on there. I don't want to overload my color up, and I don't want too much uh, fluid on there. So uh, settings I'm using is three turns out. So you want the fluid needle right in, and then. Uh, Turn it out two fluids, fan right open, and approximately 28-29 psi. So it's about two bar. And you don't want it on too wet for your first coat or your second coat. 
just nice, just a nice even coat. And uh, it goes on shiny, this paint will go on full gloss and as it dries down it will start uh, matting off. And uh, it still, it still uh, will continue to mat off until it's finished cooling down and baking, either that or left overnight if you don't have an oven. So don't panic if you are doing something like this uh, at home and it, you say, oh shit, it's, uh, it's still, still shiny. Uh, what am I going to do? It's not dulling off. It's not going matte. You just wait until it's 100% dry, and it it should should go darker. Uh, should flatten off. Don't forget to hit that like button if you like my vids. Share them around. Tell your friends about me. Got my Facebook page too. If you haven't already checked me out on Facebook, there's a link in the description of all my videos. So. This is a bit of a different video, most of my videos are on automotive refinishing, but uh, we got this fridge and I just, just decided, hey, well, why not, it's something different. I've got loads of ideas for different videos coming up in the future, so make sure you hit that subscribe button. So this is uh, in between coats here. So. It's just about uh, straight after the first coat, so it's still quite glossy. If you hang around to the end, I've got a couple of different uh, videos, just short clips on the car, oh, sorry, on the uh, fridge when it's done. So that was a good five minutes in between coats I gave it, and then came back in. You can see it's even in between coats, just started to lose its gloss level a little bit. And as for adhesion on the centre section of that roof, where you see me painting now, uh, that was actually already painted, so all I did was a quick scuff down by hand, a quick rub down by hand, and it didn't need any primer, so you didn't see me put any of the etch or the plastic primer on. Because it's a different substrate, as I mentioned at the start, so it's important that you start getting the hang of uh, identifying what you're painting. They're just nice, even, even coat, not overloading it, not leaving it dry at the same time, just, yeah, just a nice, nice even coat. So, the satin finishes and the matte finishes, uh, a lot of you guys probably already know, they're starting to come back into fashion a bit, uh, with even some cars are starting to come out with the, um, satin finishes and matte finishes on them, um, so I've never actually polished uh, a matte finish before, but supposedly I've, I've just heard through the grapevine that supposedly 3M have a uh, some sort of a polishing system. But if you do this, if you were to polish this the conventional way, then you would end up with uh, a gloss finish. So you actually polish the matte out of it. Um, I was told a while ago that uh, the active ingredient in the um, in the matting agent is just actually talcum powder, which is the same thing as the ingredient that's in um, baby powder. So uh, I believe it uh, because if you ever have a matting can, uh, it actually goes very powdery on the, the can of paint. So uh, I've still had after the ten years I heard that I've still had no evidence to the contrary. So. Uh, no reason not to believe it. And as far as that polishing system goes, I think it's basically that you're, you're actually leaving it with a semi-sanded finish. So you're not actually using a compound. I think you just they've got some certain sanding pads and you just sort of leave it like that. So something, if uh, more of these matte cars start coming out, we're gonna have to start getting the hang of how to do that. Because people want extremely good finishes on their car, as we all know. And this is a, this is a job uh, once it's all baked out. I baked it for about uh, 45 minutes and uh, until it's actually cold as well, it will continue going dull, as I mentioned earlier. So that's a real nice gloss level there. Not much dust in it. There's the average piece or two. But overall, I'm really happy with how this one came out. Even the boss came down and said, yeah, you did a real good job on that one. So uh, we um, I put the door back on the next morning. And 
this is this is the fridge once it's uh, back assembled. Put those uh, lower parts just back inside, and they can take it to their cafe. It's going in a cafe. I think it's going to have cakes or something in there. So check out these couple of links at the end. A couple of my faves. Thanks again for watching, and this has been another Gunman production. Goodbye.